Hello everyone, it's Tomas here, and welcome once again to a short tutorial about project-based subtitling. On this occasion we will focus on a few basic guidelines to make our final results more readable, complete and accessible for our potential audience. Since the great majority of us are used to watching audiovisual products with subtitles in our mother tongue, or maybe in a foreign language, we will watch, reflect upon and criticize some widespread subtitling practices that we should try to avoid in future. It's important to remember that, even though guidelines exist, there are no official international standards to be followed yet, so different companies or institutions may choose to employ particular solutions which they judge the most convenient depending on the case. Their individual preferences, common practice relative to their target locale or even customer demands. Additionally, there are a number of accessibility considerations to be taken into account. In this presentation, we will differentiate between non-SDH and SDH subtitles, that is, subtitles for the deaf or hard of hearing. In this vein, we will start by bringing forward some basic concepts about subtitling. We will then move on to concrete practices which should be avoided, and others which should be encouraged, to finish with a description of some commonly accepted conventions which try to respond to the special needs of deaf or hard of hearing audiences. To compare SDH and non-SDH subtitles, we will make use of four short clips taken from three video games and one animation film. To understand how subtitles work and how to obtain a satisfactory final product, we should keep in mind that there are three main types of constraint. One refers to the space that is available on the screen another to the time utterances or sounds last until the next one starts, and finally, a factor that derives from the latter two, the need to synchronize the text and the audio tracks to achieve a fluidity which does not prevent the viewer from receiving the message as was intended. Let's begin with the space limitations. Generally speaking, no subtitle contains more than two lines of text, and under no circumstance should these lines cover the speaker's mouths or overshadow relevant information for as long as they appear on the screen. Also, each line must contain a maximum of 42 characters, that is to say, a maximum of 42 letters, spaces and punctuation marks. Otherwise, the viewers will be forced to move their eyes from one corner of the screen to the other, thus losing sight of other visual elements. Once the subtitle is complete, a conscientious revision is always necessary. As far as time limitations are concerned, each subtitle should remain on the screen for at least one second, and no longer than six seconds. If the subtitle goes too fast, viewers will soon become frustrated in light of their incapacity to follow the textual track. If the subtitle stays on too long, viewers will find the text distracting and stop paying attention to it. Most subtitling projects recommend reading speeds lower than 21 characters per second, and lower still for SDH subtitles, closed captions or children's programming. Once again, revising the final product will guarantee accountability. The combination of time and space limitations leads us directly to the concept of synchrony. It is clear that subtitles must be present for the duration of dialogues and other types of communicative exchange but perhaps the specific conventions for deaf or hard of hearing audiences require a much more thorough description of sounds and noises which are either informative or relevant to the plot. To put it another way, subtitles may be necessary whenever a sound or noise is heard and will always be present when one or more characters speak. To quote audiovisual translator and academic Dionysius Kapsaskis, the subtitle normally appears exactly when the voice of the actor starts being heard, and then it disappears normally a bit after the utterance finishes. Mr. Kapsarskis compares the appearance and disappearance of the subtitle lines with an unconscious question that the viewer is permanently asking the audiovisual product. What is the actor saying now? In fact, when the viewer is given an answer in the form of a subtitle, the process necessarily starts over and over again until the end of the film or the television program, for example. Let's concentrate now on the do's and don'ts of subtitling, where a total of four audiovisual excerpts will attempt to clarify the situation and contribute to the avoidance of potential pitfalls. 
Our first case study, in which the particular practices we discourage will soon become clear, is entitled Aliens Colonial Marines, a video game with forced subtitles. That is to say, subtitles which are part of the visual track and not simply an addition that we may remove at will. Let us watch and reflect on the basics of subtitling with a short fragment from the introduction. Attention chicks and dicks of the USS Sephora! As of right this second, Rhino 2-1 and Rhino 2-3 are fighting to get a hold of the situation we're in. We don't leave Marines behind. Over the next two hours, we're going to send a series of dropships over to aid with Kazavak on the USS Sulaco. Sir, the Sulaco was reported last seen over Fury 161. How is it back over this planet? Lieutenant Reed, thanks for the interruption. We don't know how that boat got back here. Right now, we're worried about what's killing our Marines in there. This is a liquid situation. Information to follow as it comes online. Ready up. Good hunting, Marines. Oorah, Dash! Oorah! Our verdict for this initial approach? Please don't. We have seen too many lines, too much text, an almost unreadable font size, 20 second long subtitles, inappropriate line divisions and, as a consequence, very poor synchrony between text and sound. If the viewer is able to detect even the slightest mistake, then the quality of the final product will suffer the consequences immediately. The first subtitle contains a tag at the beginning that identifies the speaker. Ideally, if the same character continues speaking in the following subtitles, this tag should not be featured again, to avoid redundance. As we may observe in this very short excerpt, this convention is also overlooked. In any case, the use of tiny font types should never be an excuse to inundate the screen with text. In fact, the accumulation of subtitles and title credits in the introduction to this video game takes up approximately half the screen. This should never happen. Also, a subtitle line with 229 characters lasting 20 seconds, such as this one, may be readable. It is, but it is not acceptable. As regards line divisions, they seem to have been made arbitrarily rather than consciously. It does look like a text box was fed lines until there was no more space left. That is probably the reason behind the line division between subject and verb, which we discourage, or the one within the same noun clause, where dividing after the comma would have been far more convenient. In conclusion, there are two things we should keep present after this first example. Number one, it is essential to use two lines or fewer each of them containing 42 characters or fewer, at a maximum reading speed of 21 characters per second. In addition, subtitles should stay on screen for between 1 and 6 seconds. And with these very basic guidelines, we should be quite strict. Number 2. Line divisions need to be grammatically correct. Therefore, after pauses or before complementizers seems to be the most appropriate place to divide. And with this, we move on to our second case study. Once again, it is a video game with forced subtitles in English. Please watch this 45 second clip from Eternal Sonata, that's the name of the video game, and compare it with the one from Aliens, which we have just analyzed. Hey, is everybody okay? that hole what the heck is this weird black stuff be careful salsa don't touch it I don't know why but it feels sinister to me could someone explain what just happened yeah where'd they go do you think that maybe they just got wounded a bit no they probably ran away. Verdict? Handle with care. It may not be so obvious this time, but there are a few points we should discuss before accepting this version as definitive. In spite of some minor issues, we observe that there is a greater correspondence between the textual and the audio tracks, that the level of synchrony is adequate, 
and that all subtitle lines follow the time and space conventions. However, there are still some problems concerning the choice of line divisions. After Salsa, one of the characters approaches a strange black vortex to investigate its composition, the following lines are uttered by an unnamed male character. Be careful, Salsa. Don't touch it. I don't know why, but it feels sinister to me. Those are the lines. As there are three complete sentences, be careful, Salsa, don't touch it, and I don't know why, but this feels sinister to me, the most advisable choice would seem to be to place the division after the second stop, thus placing the third sentence on a separate line. Be careful, Salsa, stop, don't touch it, stop, and line division, I don't know why, but it feels sinister to me, stop. With that, we improve clarity and readability as well. Now for another question that has to do with subtitling as much as with dubbing and audiovisual translation. Is there anything about this line that got your attention as you watched the clip? No? Are you sure? Watch the clip again and pay closer attention. What's that hole? Yes, of course you're right. We have found yet another synchrony issue we should attend to before delivering our final product. In this case, it seems likely that the original Japanese sentence or sentences took longer to pronounce, and that is precisely why the English version What's that hole? provides insufficient information. Perhaps the inclusion of expletives or a complete rephrasing of this part would solve the problem outright. We have come up with this possible alternative. This is dubbed with our own voice, but perhaps you find it credible. Let's see. Oh my god, what the hell is that hole? Much better this way, isn't it? Why don't you try with your own version and see how it works? In the meantime, let us carry on with our third case study. This time, we are facing Big Hero 6, an animation film for which we have produced the subtitles ourselves. For that, we have followed the previous conventions to the letter. Let's have a look at the results. The winner! By total annihilation, Yama! <laughs> Who is next? Who has the guts to step into the ring? With little Yama! Can I try? Mm. I have a robot. I built it myself. <laughs> Beat it, kid. House rules. You gotta pay to play. Oh, uh, is this enough? What's your name, little boy? Hiro? Hiro Hamada? Prepare your bot, Zero. Our verdict? Please do. On this particular occasion we have seen a perfect correspondence between text and sound, adequate synchrony and grammatically appropriate line divisions. In conclusion, when the viewers subconsciously ask what's the character saying, we give the best answer possible. Now, what else is new here? We have one line with 28 characters lasting 6 seconds. The winner by total annihilation ellipsis followed by two lines in the same subtitle, amounting to 12 characters in a period of 3 seconds. In all points we have followed the guidelines to our best knowledge, and better judgement. The novelty resides in the fact that two characters speak in one single subtitle. The procedure in this case is to write a dash, followed by a space, followed by the utterance, and then do the same with the second character after adding a line division. Please keep in mind that freeware subtitle editors such as Egisub require the use of Shift and Enter to divide subtitle lines. Other programs, however, and platforms like Clipflare or Amara simply need to press Enter to achieve the exact same effect. So everything seems to be ready, doesn't it? But wait a minute. Something's still missing for our subtitle to be complete and accessible. What might it be? This is the same fragment we watched earlier, with the difference that there is no audio track in this case. 
Watch closely. Although it's true that all the lines of dialogue have been reflected in our subtitle, the moment we mute the sound we cannot fail to perceive that the deaf or hard of hearing viewer is missing relevant information. To make the product accessible for these audiences, it is now our intention to describe sounds and noise with the help of SDH tags. This will add a new layer of information to our previous work. This final section, which we have entitled SDH Accessibility, will offer two examples of full SDH tagging, and will also put forward a methodology to put oneself in the potential audience's shoes. As we have pointed out repeatedly already, putting sound and noise into words may be challenging, but it contributes to making things easier for those who can't hear. Some special conventions to produce SDH subtitles include the use of different colors, such as yellow, white, green and blue, to associate an utterance with a particular character, which may be the protagonist, the antagonist or a secondary character. This, however, still cannot be done with plain text subtitles, for example .srt, using free web programs. In addition, the subtitler should aim at tagging relevant sounds and noises as thoroughly as possible, making sure that the time, space and synchrony prerequisites are met at all times. Since tagging implies the introduction of more text in more complex forms, lower reading speeds are usually recommended, and even more so when SDH audiences include children. To make our final products easier to manage and revise, we will not apply color coding to our SRT subtitles. Therefore, our subtitle files will contain less code and more text. Apart from that, we will not use font type variations in clips that are shorter than two minutes. In other words, we will not be using bold type to indicate emphasis or italics to reflect narratorial interventions. We will set our new maximum reading speed for SDH subtitles at 16 characters per second and describe relevant sounds and noise using parentheses, capital letters and either the present simple tense or nouns. If character identification turns out to be especially difficult at some point during the audiovisual excerpt, we could choose to add a tag with the character's name at the start of the intervention. The following interventions by the same character would not be identified unless a different character speaks in the middle. This avoids redundance. When many people speak at the same time, we may decide to add the all tag to make it clearer. However, tags should never become spoilers. If the characters still haven't been called by their own name, it would be better to tag them as man, woman or magical hippopotamus, if that were the case, until somebody says their name for the first time. Also, tags should never reveal important plot points, so instead of using Luke's father, it's preferable to say Darth Vader. Look at the results of our use of the special SDH conventions in the previous clip. This time, no identification tags have been considered necessary as we are dealing with a very tiny fragment but relevant sounds and noises are all there and the general reading speed has been lowered. In fact, no line exceeds 14 characters per second. The winner! By total annihilation, Yama! <laughs> Who is next? Who has the guts to step into the ring? With little Yama! Can I try? Mm. I have a robot. I built it myself. <laughs> Beat it, kid. 
House rules. You gotta pay to play. Oh, uh, is this enough? What's your name, little boy? Hiro? Hiro Hamada? Prepare your bot, Zero. As you may have seen, all of our SDH tags follow the conventions that we have detailed for a project-based solution. Parentheses, capital letters, and either the present simple tense or nouns. For instance, crowd cheers both identifies the character and describes the action. Then we also have sparks, when the robot is broken. Grunts when Yama, the big guy, shows confusion after being challenged by a child. Sighs, when Hiro Hamada says his name. Magnetic echo, which seemed to us a good description of the subtle buzz that is heard in the background. And we also have laugh, present simple plural, as it's Yama and the audience at the robot fight, and clinks, when both contenders leave the money on the plate. Nevertheless, the question remains, what should be described and in how much detail? The answer is, it depends. In fact, as long as the time, space and synchrony conditions are met, SDH tags should be as complete and descriptive as possible. So that even when the sound is muted, barely any information is lost. Of course, this would be the ideal situation, but time as well as space constraints tend to force subtitlers to make difficult decisions and leave out the least relevant in order to preserve the fundamental. Let's see what we've learned so far about SDH accessibility. We know that a maximum of two lines of text are allowed with a maximum of 42 characters each. The recommended reading speed for SDH is 16 characters per second or lower. Each subtitle should remain visible for at least one second and for a maximum of six seconds. Finally, relevant sounds and noises need to be described with the help of SDH tags. For this final video game clip, taken from Onimusha 3, we have followed these steps. Number one, watch the clip and create the non-SDH subtitles. Number two, watch the clip with non-SDH subtitles and no sound. And number three, create the final version of our SDH subtitles. Let's see the process in more detail now. First, the non-SDH version. Leave him be. I'll take care of him. Kalekanto. We meet again, Samanosuke. You shall not meet Nobunaga! Now, muted and subtitled. Finally, our latest SDH version. Leave him be. I'll take care of him. Galeganto! We meet again, Samanosuke. You shall not meet Nobunaga! <laughs> And that's it for today. As always, thank you for watching this tutorial on how to produce SDH subtitles following project-based conventions. We hope that our explanation has been helpful. For any queries, please feel free to leave a comment in the comments section. Bye now!